Um, so today I am at Joseph Jenkins Robert, first president of Liberia House, the house he used to live in. That is the time he was agent of the ACS, American Colonization Society, before becoming, president, before becoming president of the Republic of Liberia from 1848 to 1856 and then he became president again from 1872 to 1876 so he went two times on being president in Liberia so come with me in but now it's currently turned into Joy Howard Taylor National Library you can see the writing here because he doesn't live here anymore none of his relatives stays here so it's now turning to Joy Howard Taylor National Children's Library so like it's the National Library of Liberia Come with me inside. So over here, like I said, is now turning to the National Library of the country. We have literature here from 800 level to 899. That's almost 900. And there we have philosophy, 100 to 199. We have social sciences, we have language. We have pill signs, and then up there, there are some things I actually want you guys to see. So there is a hero of the Freedom Ride, James Lawson, from Tennessee. I'm sure he was part of the ACS. There too is a hero of Freedom Ride, Glenda Gilta David, from South Carolina. I'm sure she was part of the ACS. But this is a this is the American chef of the National Library. So I want to say you are welcome to the Library National Museum. My name is Dolo. Okay. I just want to acquaint you a few information about the National Museum. First and first, the building you are standing in. This building is one of the oldest buildings here in Liberia. This building was built in the year 1862. And it was first used as a house of parliament. 1958, this place became National Museum as you see it today. Okay, 1958. 1958. So it has been here since then as the National Museum since 1958. Good. Now, the museum has a key theme, and the theme of the National Museum is Waves of Time. So the Waves of Time is focusing on the transition of Liberia from one era to another. So we move on now to see some of the traditional artifacts of our people started with some of the way our people build their homes. This is how our people build their homes during the days of old. Okay. But then they never had knowledge of living in modern homes like you and I today. They build temporary structure where they live. In here, you will see the kind of first sign that was invented by the people. Can I touch it? No. Okay. So, this is the kind of traditional game. This game is called Mangala. Mangala is not limited to Liberia, but it's to Africa. So in other parts of Africa, like Nigeria, Ghana, you may see Mangala there, but the name may be different. Yeah, I've seen it. So that is a tribal or traditional seat for the people and so forth. Here is the hammer. The hammer was the first means of transportation for the people. During the days of old, our people never had knowledge of vehicle. It was not existing. So they invented this one, and as a matter of fact, this was a presidential vehicle. This is where the king or the chief or the head of the people will sit and the young men will carry him on their shoulder from one town to another. They also use it as means of realization or they use it as an ambulance to take the sick person to a nearby herpalist. Here is our traditional kitchen. In the kitchen, you see the dryer. The essence of the dryer is for preservation. Here is where they put the raw meat or the raw fish and the heat of the fire will touch it, it gets dried. When the meat is dried, it goes for a longer period of time, it won't spoil. Here is a traditional pot made of clay. 
and this is the traditional cooler in here they have or they place the water they cover it and the water remain fresh and cool cold like the one we drink currently. oh yeah of course especially if the water is from the forest this is a calabash used for fetching water and so on okay next there is the sandy mask the sandy society was the first school for our people during the days of old, our people never had knowledge of academic education. The ones you guys are acquiring today, where you go learn history, geography, chemistry, physics, all the things, I mean, they were not existing. The only form of school was the Bush school, which were divided into two, the Poro and the Sandy. The Poro was for men, as the Sandy was for the women. In this school, you as a woman, you are going to learn basics of life. During those days, women had a distinct role in society. The issue of gender equality was not in existence. Anything boys do, we can do the same. No, it was not like that. Women, you were responsible to take care of the home, take care of children, and so forth, as men was responsible to go out there and you know, look for food for the family, make farm, hunt, and so on. That was the responsibility of the men. Are we good? So in this school, as a woman, you go there and learn lots of things upon graduation, this was graduation marked for the women, for the women's society. Are we good? Yeah. So all the, all the marks here yeah, from the Sunday society? From the Sunday, okay. different tribes. Some same, some tribe use same mask. Okay. So these are marks from Nima County, knowing that Nima has two tribes, the Giyo and the Mano. This was a Mano mask, and this mark was first introduced in 1960. And this is a Giyo mask, which was introduced in 1923. And the essence of the mask are about travel or traditional performances, making occasion unique, welcoming strangers in town, and so forth. And these marks are the symbol of the ancestral spirit of the people of Nima County. Are we good? Mm -hmm. And here are other marks, and this is masquerade. And the masquerade is a symbol of Africa's tradition. Yeah. Looking at the double canon culture in Africa, you may see that masquerade may appear in different forms. So we have different kind of masquerade representing different culture in Africa. You see different heads representing different cultures, different head, different, different head. You see them all. So representing different, different culture in Africa. And these are warrior vests. And the essence of the warrior vest during those days were used by hunters. During those days, the hunter would use the warrior vest to go and hunt. And they also use it uh, by warriors. To go and fight in the event of battle, the warrior wear it to go and fight. So, the warrior first existed before the independence, right? Oh yeah. And even after the independence, they existed, or uh, simply, I would say yes, they existed. Yes. Okay. Yes, they existed. So, do you think some of those first still exist up to present? Yeah, they, in they still exist. Like yes, but not in the same form. Okay. But in another form, okay. in a kind of textile form. Okay, but what you see this way, no, it's not like that, right? Now, like during those days, these ones had travel or traditional powers on them that would make the warrior appear or disappear. Oh. They were very powerful. If you may have heard about Chief Swakogo, these are some of the things she used during those days. Swakogo, yeah. Of, yeah. Are we good? Yeah. yeah. Because she was a warrior. Yeah, I know. Right? So here, these are fortune tellers. The fortune tellers, as the name indicates, talks about the future. They had the ability to tell you what will happen in the future. So more like the gods. More like gods, correct. So during those days, um, if the fortune teller tell you that uh, there will be rain, maybe about five or 10 o'clock tonight, and if you check it, oh yes, there will be rain. So the, the, the fortune teller were excited. You know what I'm saying? So these are them. They were different kind of fortune teller. They were not one type. Okay. And these are traditional musical instruments. This, this is one is commonly used or called samba. This is a traditional xylophone. You see them? And these are traditional stools that were in existence prior to becoming of the your body wants to see today. This is Kopo. Kopo is the chief spokesperson for all the trouble or tradition that we see down. Kopo is the wisest devil. Kopo speaks from the throat. Kopo has the ability to call you by your name. Kopo, we are knowing you. We are knowing you. We are seeing you before. Kobo, Kobo can call your name. So because Kobo is very wise. Kobo gets tall, Kobo gets short. Kobo sometimes rolls. Are we good? 
and Kobo is most of the time from the uh, the far belt. The Mendoza Yeah, yeah, the, the Kima belt, most of it. And other traditional, these are ancient stones. These stones, as shown here, were found in the soil of Liberia and its adjacent part. During those days, people who found these stones, most of them were not archaeologically inclined. So when they got a stone, they concluded that these were gods. They began to worship them as gods. So they found them like this, or they turned yeah, it like they this? They found them like this, and they themselves created, I mean, carved some. Are we good? So they carved some. So they went and placed them in the shrine where they worshiped them as their gods. You know what I'm saying? Like specifically, these were gods of the Gizi tribe. The Gizi called this called Pondo. Pondo. They believe that Pondo serves as means of communication between the living and the dead. They believe that if the loved one dies or mommy or daddy is dead, you will still communicate with them through the powers of Pondo. They believe that Pondo will carry a message and will bring back results in subsequent time. That was, I believe, it was working for them. The down there, that was the goal of the Gola tribe. This one was called Manfoa. Manfoa was a Gola goal. Okay. So during those days, Manfoa served as means of protection for them, direction, protection, and so forth. That's why they formed Manfoa. Manfoa like this. Yes. And Manfoa was in a special shrine. All of a sudden, unfortunately for them, Manfoa was stolen by a German national in the 18th century and was carried to Germany. He stayed there. But then they brought the complaint to the government of Liberia. The government worker modalities went through court proceeding and they ensured that Mafa come back. Mafa returned in 1920. This is the talking drum. The talking drum was used as information dissemination. During the days of old, our point one had knowledge of cell phone. Cell phone was not existing. So they invented this one where a special person was trained to beat this drum. Every sound that came from the drum had its own meaning. So during those days, if something bad happened, there's a way they would beat the drum that would indicate something bad has happened. If anything good happened, there's another way they would beat the drum. That's what the talking drum was for. Are we good? Yeah, we are good. Here is the hospitality spoon. During those days, the hospitality spoon was given to generous women as an honor. So during those days, you as a woman, if you are kind, you are good to the people, you love the people, there's a way they will honor you by giving you one of these spoons. Okay. And you, in return, will use the spoon as a walking spoon or a dance spoon. Whoever sees with the spoon will pay respect to you or honor to you. During those days, the spoon was also given to the wife of a king, in the even if she gives birth to a child. Okay. So if a child is a female, she gets one of these kind of spoons. But if the child is a male, she gets something like this. See that? So where you see this hole or this deep, that was where there was, there's a system in our setting we call uh, putting the child outside. Mm. Uh, you may also call it naming the child. So it's a ceremony. If that time comes, in there, there's a raw rest. They put a raw rest in there. So when they put a raw rest there, and the male wife, who will be uh, being carried on the ceremony, the hair male wife, will dip her hand in the raw rest and spray it as a sign of blessing. So as you spray it, you see some things like you are blessed, and so you know so she'll be seeing some lots of good things about that child. Okay, and as you see it, she spray the rest. As you see it, she spray the rest. That's why it's for. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Now we show you some musical instruments. These are musical instruments. The sasa is shown there. The sasa uh, nowadays is commonly used in the churches, but uh, during those days, our people use use them for play and other things. These are all musical instruments. This is a motivational drum that people use the one on the farm. When they are working, they are singing, dancing, and someone is there playing the drum to motivate them, to encourage them to work more. Okay. So that's what this one is for. This is a guitar, traditional guitar. This one is placed on the belly as if it played. Okay. The, the, the total bark and all these things, the flute, all these things combined give you a beautiful travel or traditional music. That's what these are for. Here is the weaving machine the weaving machine was invented in the 18th century by the people of lofa and Bon counties the weaving machine they use the cutting and then you see this one they use a spin it to produce a thread you yeah. as a spin it it makes a thread long thread see there and they join this thread together using this type of weaving machine to produce a fabric and when they the join the fabric cloth. together 
the country clothes like the one you call the country clothes, right? So when they combine these ones, they produce a beautiful gown for a king and his wife. So during those days, the country gown or the country clothes have been very expensive. Even till now, in our setting, they are still expensive. You don't see ordinary people wearing these things. You either see a government official or someone that is doing some kind of business somewhere, making good money. Those are people you see wearing these gowns. Are we good? People like you. People like you. Amen. I don't want so many use. Them. So who is the, the old so man? So the man the... there is Chief Tamatira. Oh, Chief Tamatira. Tamatira with a plenty of wives. Yes, that's good. So Chief Tamatira, one of the I know, uh, 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 powerful chiefs in Liberia, had lots of women, lots of children. And then after he died, one of his grandsons, by the name of Elizabeth Tira, learned from him some of his eyes and other things. So this is Elizabeth Tira. So who would learn from him? This man doing similar things that his late grandfather used to do. He's still alive, currently in the U.S. Don't ask me where in the U.S. because I haven't been there. So he's there. Are we good? Yeah. So that's a late, uh, uh, how you say, Elizabeth Tira. Here is the God of Fertility. So if you can't born... Now, the God of Fertility was for barren women. During those days, if a woman could not give birth to a child, mm -hmm. let's see in the modern world, if a woman cannot give birth to a child, she goes to hospital. Yeah. yeah. But traditionally, there were no hospital during those days. So if a woman could not give birth to a child, it is a responsibility. You go to the God of Fertility, pray to this God. They will be asking you to do some sacrifices, maybe in the tomb of bring cow or bring goat or bring chicken or bring money, whatever they may call for, depending on your case. Once you comply, they use your herbs, they give you give some drink, say something to you and go back to your husband. So this is the actual goal of fertility that existed? This is the actual goal of fertility that existed, and not only this one, there were other ones. Yes. But this is one of them. Which, from, from which tribe? The tribe is not specific. Okay. Okay, but mainly the bandi. bandi. Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. So yeah. these are them. Then here we we'll also show you some of our wildlife. Yeah, Liberia has chimpanzee, we got monkeys in Liberia. We have elephant in Liberia. And we got a pygmy hippo. Now, it will interest you to know that the pygmy hippo is unique to Liberia. You don't find it nowhere in the world except Liberia. So the common hippo around the world is this one. Yeah. But that one is in Liberia only. Are we good? So far, so good. That daughter for the total tour of the day. I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, I Thanks a lot. It. Okay. It was nice meeting you. Me too. Me too. It was nice yeah, meeting me you. Too.